Hey guys, welcome back to the series How to Play. We will be looking at unusual deck lists every week and going through the playstyle. This week we're taking a look at Wild Play Dead Hunter. And based on some feedback from the last video, we've changed the order around so the video flows a little bit better. In the early game, Hunter relies on mad scientist traps and weapons to control and build its own board. And in the mid game, it relies on Pile to Shredder and Belcher to protect the board it's created. Against aggro, Belcher can also be used to set up for Deathstalker Rexar on Kev, or set up into an explosive trap. And in the late game, it uses powerful Deathrattle synergies to disrupt the opponent's board, and use cards like Sneeds, Umbra, Playdead, and Carnivore's Cube to build a giant board itself. One other key aspect of the deck is Search and Discover. Using two copies of Tracking, we can look for cards to Kev out into against aggro, and we can also look for key cards against Control. Cards like Sylvanas, Playdead, Umbra, and Cube are ideal to find against control matchups. Utilising two copies of Stitch Tracker also allows us to search for specific cards against control and aggro, with the added benefit of creating a copy of the card in the deck. So potentially, against control matchups, you could play two Sylvanas, two Nzoffs, and two Sneeds, and in some cases, three copies. Also a special mention to Corpse Widow in this video, uh, an absolutely uh, powerhouse of a five drop in this deck. If you can play this on Kev, and you have a Mad Scientist or a 2-drop Death Rattle in your hand, you can play that on the same turn as the Corpse Widow. If the Corpse Widow stays alive during a turn, uh, on turn 6 you can play Sneeds. Uh, on turn 6 you can also play Sylvanas and play Dead. It's an extremely powerful card that should be included in the deck. Sometimes I actually include 2 copies, but with Stitch Tracker you can actually find an extra Corpse Widow uh, within the deck and play 2 of them in the same game. If your opponent ever leaves up Sneeds, or he ever leaves up a Sylvanas on board, you can also play Umbra and Cube on the same turn, and that will generate a giant board full of, uh, full of Sneeds, essentially, as you can see in this clip here. This first play dead on the deck, I've tried to balance to deal with aggro and control efficiently. Its worst matchup is Burn Mage, and its best matchups are Warlock and Priest. The second deck list is created to target specifically greedy decks, so if you are playing a lot of Jade, Druid and Control Warlock, I suggest switching to this deck. Lastly, this deck focuses on aggro, the inclusion of Plated Beetle and the change of Freeze Trap to Wandering Monster helps against Paladin and also helps against Mage. Also feel free to experiment with any number of secrets, it really depends on what you're playing on the ladder. Uh, you could also include two explosives and no Freeze Traps, uh, it's totally up to you, just play it by ear if you are playing a lot of uh, one specific deck. Versus Control, you'll want to find Sylvanas, Stitch Tracker and Track, discarding all removal and secrets. If you are running two Freeze Traps, it may be worth keeping Mad Scientist if that is in your opening hand, and it also may be worth keeping Corpse Widow for a later turn. This mulligan rule can be applied to Warlocks, Druids and Priests. Versus aggressive decks, it's important to keep all early drops, Bladezooker, Quickshot, Unleash and Mad Scientist, and in some cases King's Elec, but knowing the type of aggressive deck is very important. In some cases, it may be worth keeping Explosive Trap in your opening hand, Flare and Track. Track can be used against Secret Mage to trigger a secret, Flare is a great card to trigger secrets like Polymorph Sheep and Explosive Rune, and Unleash the Hounds is an excellent card to keep against Paladin. This mulligan guide can be applied to Warrior, Paladin, Mage, and Shaman. Okay, so for our commentary match, I chose our worst matchup, which is Burn Mage. Um, because I've got such a good opening hand here, I actually choose to keep Animal Companion. Uh, normally, if you don't have cards like Scientist, Quickshot, and the Glaivezooka, you would just dump the Animal Companion. And because we're going second, we also have access to the coin, so we can use that to trigger Counterspell, or test for Counterspell. So the reason this is such a difficult matchup is because we don't really represent any early, too much early game pressure. We rely on our uh, late game Death Rattles to disrupt and uh, build the board up with Sneeds. So here, I actually choose Play Dead. Over the rest, I figure Sylvanas isn't going to be stealing much this game. I already have access to early game removal with Glaivezooka. So I choose Play Dead, and hopefully I'll be able to use this on a Mad Scientist, or maybe a Sneeze later on in the game to try apply a little bit more pressure. 
So we see two scientists face off against each other here. As the aggressor, the mage should be always going face with this scientist. Let's see where his, uh, his play is here. Plays a seeker from hand. And goes face. So right here, Glaive Zuger is an excellent play. I can buff my scientist to a free 2 and push damage into his face. I want to try force this mage to to play a little bit more defensively. I'm going to try race this guy. Uh, it's very difficult for me to win if I trade into all of his minions early game. Uh, this this deck I'm running here doesn't run plated beetles, so this is actually the uh, the first deck deck list that you're looking at in the video. The plate just the standard play dead hunter. We have many secrets. So again, drops a secret here. And actually trades in. So he's protecting his his uh, four free minion. So we pull free strap here. So obviously we can test with counter. So we hit one counter there. And now we can uh, we can basically assume that those two cards there are either gonna be ice block. Explosive Ruin or Polymorph uh, Potion. So we flanking strike the 4 free. So we're still in a pretty good position here. We've got Freeze Trap up, so we avoid a little bit of damage into face over the next few turns. Mage use a bit of burn there to clear. So I choose to play my spells now whilst we have uh, no counter spell up. So we quick shot the minion. We're going to protect the freeze trap a little bit here. We want to try freeze back a slightly bigger minion, like a Cabal Crystal Runner. So this is excellent. He's now using Ben to remove some of my minions, and there is a third secret. So we know it's going to be explosive or polymorph potion here. So we play out our weakest minion, and for care purposes, I choose scientist, so we can instantly play another card. So we have something represented on board. Uh, at this point in the game, 24 HP, we're still in a nice position. If the mage were to find a Lunaf, we'd be in a lot of trouble. And there it is, turn 7. So we had that on the previous turn, but he chose to remove my Huffer, which was a good choice, I think. Okay, so now we know that's not Polymorph. Potion of Polymorph. So we can assume that's uh, that's a nice block, and there's a third secret. One of those could be a, another counter spell. Excuse me, you are on fire. Again, Mage has to use his burn here to basically drop our uh, our sludge belcher. And I don't really want to Rexar here. I don't really want to give up the power. So I actually, I actually choose to play uh, Shredder in the center just to trigger this uh, this next secret. And so, so my surprise, actually, I completely forgot about this. This secret wasn't uh, Explosive or Polymorph Potion. It was, in fact, another counter spell. So I, I chose to use the Freeze Trap there so we could get two play deads on this. We, we want a wide board here so we can basically represent uh, Lethal over the next two turns. So now we know that's a nice block. We know that's a nice block, and it's uh, an unusual secret. We don't know what the second secret is. But we can maybe think of something like Duplicate as being, as being played there. We know both counter spells are now, are now gone. So we see a little bit more card draw there. Arcane Intellect just topping up the uh, Major's potential burn for the next turn. So here we can uh, we can pop him, gain five armor. We can pop him at one, gain five armor, and remove uh, one minion from the board. And then we have to hope he can't lethal us from that point. So this is our best chance to win. So we actually we actually go in for face here, and then we drop him to one HP hero power, and we play our uh, our Rexar. So this will kill the valet on the left. And then he's left with a, uh, a fairly sizable board. The Mana Worm causes basically a lot of concern for me here. It was Duplicate. Because every spell he's, uh, he's going to burn into face here, it's going to power up that Mana Worm a little more. The uh, the burn on the uh, Fireball is excellent there. Uh, 
almost legal here. S seven to six. Okay. I forget what he drops us to. I, I believe it's one HP. I don't think the fireball burn would have mattered to him too much Excuse there. Me. Actually, yeah, no, no, because he had uh, he had forgotten torch in his hand as well. So he actually just drops us to one HP. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have the lethal air, so the uh, the risk paid off. The uh, the Rexar killing the two two and then gaining five armor pulled through in the end, and we were able just to pull that victory through. Just playing a little bit aggressive. So what we what we what really won the game was a little bit of aggression from our side, uh, pushing damage each turn, making sure we popped them at the right time, and making sure we played Rexar at the right time. Once again, I've included all dick dick, dick lists. <laughs> Once again, I've included all deck. <clears throat> the second deck I've dubbed greedy greedy hunter. I think. I think I should really bloody know. Why can't I speak today? I hate doing these voiceover recordings.